I'm Javis Lewis and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Commodore Basic V2 as a scripting language on your Mac. That's right. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, we all know the Commodore Basic as it was present on the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. Amazing stuff. I've been doing a few tutorials of how to use it here recently. And there is a way that somebody by the name of Michael Starman and James Abbatiello, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, shout out to you guys. and Big, big thank you for implementing it this way, the way you've done it is that you can compile the original Commodore Basic V2 on your own machine and then run it in a command line interface. And of course, at a tremendous speed, much faster than an emulator could run it because an emulator simulates all the registers of the original CPU and puts the whole thing up on the screen and makes it possible to play games and all that. But this implementation doesn't work like that. This just takes in your basic commands and utilizes them. They've tweaked the system so that it makes full use of the command line interface so you can load and save programs and you can even launch programs from the command line. Let me show you what I mean. I'm on a Mac running 10.12 Sierra here and this is the standard terminal application and I've already compiled this so I can just show you how this works if I type this in CBM basic then this comes up Aha. and this is indeed what you think it is it is printing out the strings just like the Commodore 64 would do or the vice emulator would do but this works natively on your machine and all the standard commands work in capital letters so if you go print hello world then this is what happens or you can have loops for i equals 1 to 10 and then you can say print hello and then you go next then uh, that doesn't work why is that uh, interesting let me try that again 4i equals 1 to 10 oh because 2 needs to be in capitals as well there we go Haha. -ha. So it all works just like we expected. And with Control C, we can get out of this. So I'm going to show you how to make that happen on your Mac. It does work on other platforms, but I'm going to show you this on my Mac. If I work out how to do it on Windows, I will show you how to do it on Windows as well. So first, what we need to do is head over to this GitHub repository, which is Michael and James's project and they've kindly open sourced this for us and give us a little uh, usage instructions here. So what we need to do there is to get this on our local system. I'm going to just quickly delete what I've done there before so I can show you how to do this step by step. There's a big green button here that says clone or download and if you click that then you can either open this in the GitHub for desktop application if you have it installed or you can just download the zip file. That's what I'm going to do. And that'll only take a second and it'll pop it into your downloads folder here. And if you double click that, then it'll open that. And that'll come up as a folder, which I'm going to drag onto my desktop here. Now I'm going to launch the terminal app and you can find that in applications, utilities, terminal, or you can just search for that using that little spotlight search here. And once you've done that, you can double click the folder that you've dragged onto your desktop. And in order to get to this path, if you're not quite familiar with the command line application, the terminal application, you can just type CD with a space, and then you drag that folder from the finder window directly into the terminal window. And what that'll do is it'll write out the whole path of where this repository is unzipped of course then you hit return and then you are right in there to see what's in that folder you can type ls and hit return and then you'll see every file that's there and if you want to see more details of the file you can or the, or the contents you can type you can type ls minus la and then that'll give you this 
So if you're familiar with the terminal application, this will all make sense to you. If not, then don't worry too much about it. You can always read up on that. To build this, to compile this on your system, you also need some tools like the make tool and the GCC compiler. And then it's a simple matter of typing make. If, you're, if that doesn't work for you, you can always type make minus V to see the version of make that you have installed. Now this is something that is not pre-installed by default on the Mac OS. You can do that. There's an article I'm going to link to in the description, which is how to install make and GCC on a Mac. Uh, Apple have not installed that by default, but you can bring that in by just typing Xcode select hyphen hyphen install, and that'll install the Xcode command line tools. Or if you have Xcode installed on your system, which is a free IDE for developing iPhone and Mac OS apps, then that'll be installed alongside Xcode as well. So that's a requirement that you have to do. On Linux systems, it works very much the same, but I might, I might make a different tutorial on that. And once you've done that, you should be able to type make hyphen V, and then that should not come up with an error message that should come up with something like this. So while you're in that folder, all you need to type in is make without any parameters, and then the program will go ahead and compile itself thanks to a make file, which is kind of a little instruction script that tells make how to compile the file. So make compiles and links the file. Don't worry about the warning messages here. It'll work just fine anyway. If you list the contents of the directory now again, you should see one additional file, which is just called CBM basic. Here it is. And it was just made like right now. And in order to utilize and run this file, I need to change the file permissions so that the file becomes executable. And we do that with the chmod command. So chmod plus X, and then you type in dot slash CBM basic. And if you hit return, you don't get any output, but the permissions of that file have changed. The permissions, you will see those at the very front here. And if we list this again, ls minus la, you should see a small change there. Now, in order to run this, we should type dot slash CBM basic. And when we do that, we get the kind of almost familiar command line prompt here. And I'm going to talk you through how to use it. So there's a few things that we need to be aware of. We can't, if this is not an emulator, so you can't just go ahead and attach a D64 image and then load and save files. That's not how this works. It does not emulate the 6502 or, this, or the 6510 CPU. It does not emulate the um, VIC as such, it, but it will, be able to run all the most of the commands that the c64 used to be able to run and uh, one of them is for example the print command so print hello like i've said uh, like i've shown you in the beginning will work but you must type it in capital so if you type it in small letters like print hello like this then you'll get a syntax error so there's really no way around it you can just does the shift uh, caps lock work Caps lock does work. That's good. Then, of course, everything is capitalized. So it's one of those things. And you get the same error messages as well as you would on a normal C64. So if I type input a string, for example, then I get a whoops. Well, obviously, if I type, if I spell it correctly, then I would get an illegal direct error. So all these things are implemented. If I go and print TI string for the time, then I get the actual time of the system. So it is one minute past seven in the evening right now. So it is it is the correct time that's implemented there. What does not work are the cursor keys. So if you use the cursor keys on your keyboard, you get kind of something like this. So screen editing commands like we know it, that does not work. But typing commands in and the backspace key that does work but of course uh, cursor instruction keys and some of the graphic characters well actually all of the graphic characters don't work but it is nice to be able to write a logic program or have something like my lotto generator run on this thing full speed one thing that i guess it's implemented in the windows version that is not quite implemented in this version is the get 
command. So get usually gets one character from the keyboard and then continues the program execution. It will work here. So if we type in 10 uh, get a string, then that will work. But if I usually if I run this program on an emulator, then I would immediately get the ready message because the computer doesn't stop here but in my case or in, in this case here it does actually stop and wait for a keyboard command so if I type in the letter G uh, and hit return then I get the ready prompt and I can even say list a string and it will go sorry print a string and it will give me the letter that I've typed in here but it waits for me and it waits until I press return as well so some commands work a little bit differently so keep that in mind but the real power and the real strength of this lies in using this as a scripting language, like we would use a shell script or a PHP script from the command line. We can execute this from the command line. I'll show you how to do that. So first, in order to get out of this, hit Control C, and then that'll bring you back to the command line here. If we list this, then uh, one thing that all the command line tools have in common is that they don't reside in some folder on the desktop. They usually reside in a folder called user bin, and that's uh, part of the path variable, so we don't have to type in uh, dot slash in order to bring this command up. If I just type in cdm basic right now, it'll tell me command not found, because the current directory is by default not searched through for a command that I type in. So the easiest way to make this command available all the time to everyone on the system is by copying it. So I need uh, administrator permissions for that. So if I type in sudo, that's for the administrator permissions, cp for copy, and then I go dot slash cdm basic, and then I need to give it the destination, which is for slash user bin. And if I do that, I'm being asked for my administrator password. And that's copy that. So now if I copy, if I type in CVM basic without anything, then I go back to the command prompt, which is cool. That's what we want. So control C will bring me back to the uh, standard command line. And uh, some programs are actually included in a folder called test. So if we go CD test, that's this folder here or in fact this folder here, then we can see that the repo has a few test programs included. So we can go in there and uh, have a look at it. And if we wanted to run the SIF command here, or the SIF program, which is just a, just a basic program, we can look at it with cat dot slash, dot slash SIF dot bass, and then we can see the contents of this. So this is the this is the contents here. And we can run it by typing CDM basic followed by the file name that we that contains a clear text file. So it's not something that you've loaded or that, that you've saved on the direct uh, command prompt there. It's just a standard file, much like one that we can we can see here, one that's made with Vi or one with a standard text generator, like a text edit or whatever. So you type CVM basic followed just by the file name, which in my case is dot slash sif dot bass. And if I hit return, then it'll execute that, which looks very funky, doesn't it? Got to work out what that program does does make me look dizzy though. so uh, don't look too deep into the numbers you can at any time uh, stop a script by hitting control C again and that'll just stop anything that's that's happened there but there's something even better that we can do and uh, for this I'm gonna create uh, my own program using Vi and uh, Vi is just a text editor that you can call from the command line. It's, it's installed by default uh, with your Mac operating system. So type Vi and I'm going to type hello. And that's just the name of my program. I can call it hello.baz like you would call shell scripts, uh, give the extension .sh or I have PHP files would have the extension dot. PHP or C files would have .c or whatever. You can do it, it's not obligatory. I might just not do that for now. And um, then you come up with an empty screen because the file didn't exist, I'm creating it right now. Hit A to start typing something. And uh, I can go ahead and, and create my program 
as I wish. So in line 10, I'm going to go uh, print hello world. And perhaps in line 20, I'm going to ask for a name. So input, what's your name? And I'll say uh, semicolon a string. And in line 30, I can say print hello a string and line 40 perhaps will end the program how's that now this would be just a standard program like we've seen the the sif example there but if i go further to the top of it and i'm going to use the standard shebang uh, routine which is a, a hash sign followed by an exclamation mark followed by the full path to CBM basic, which in my case is user bin, and then also the, the title of the interpreter, which is CBM basic. If I do that, then this can be called just by itself. So in order to save this, I'm gonna hit escape, and I'm gonna hit shift Z Z. And then that'll bring me back to the command line, and it'll also have saved the program. Now, one other thing that we need to do, we need to change the permissions to any kind of script that we're gonna execute from the command line. So again, I'm gonna type chmod, whoops, plus x dot slash hello. And if I've done that, I can call that with dot slash hello without anything else, and it'll just run the program like it was any standard shell script which is totally cool so it says hello world what's your name and my name is jay and it says syntax error in 20 what a shame I must have made some kind of typo there let's uh, let's see if i can um, let's see if i can figure out what it was it probably was the semicolon here which if i'm going to replace it with a comma that might work oh no i'm sorry that wasn't it that's perfect. I have misspelled a string here. That needs to be an uppercase A. Okay, let's try this again. My name is Jay. Hello, Jay. Awesome. It knows my name already. Scary. So that is how you can compile the CBM Basic, the wonderful CBM Basic version 2, as seen on the Commodore 64 and the VIC-20 on your Mac. As soon as I work out how to do this on Windows, I will let you know. Have a look into, if, you wanna, if you're keen on doing this yourself, have a look into Visual Studio Express or Community Edition. That is a Windows IDE that you can run that usually comes with all these building tools. I'm just not familiar with how to do anything like that on Windows. I'm gonna test this on CentOS as well on a Linux distribution, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna work just the same here. Well, that was it for today. Thank you so much to Michael Stallman and James Abatiello. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, of course, share it with your friends, family and total strangers. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. I will see you soon for more Schnickschnack and shenanigans. Take care. Bye bye.